Yeah. Hello. I am uh, still working. It's 11. 11 4. And not tired yet. Uh, so since the last video, I have been... I did all sorts of stuff related to um, reporting information from background threads back to the to the main thread, which happens via message passing essentially. Um, so yeah, when background processes are running, such as the export um, the export procedures, which I'm, I'm going to be working on next. Um, I have to like send uh, messages back to the main thread um, to say to just to upgrade, up, update um, progress bars and things like that, and and report errors and that sort of thing. So this file I just deleted, which is why this is complaining now. This shouldn't exist. So delete this file. Delete this file. I don't even know what the hell this is. Just delete that. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Yeah, I just deleted this file and it broke everything, um, which makes sense. So, this. I'm basically going to be deleting all of this old export code um, but copying and pasting it into a different place. Um, so it's sort of like a refactor but it's uh, just moving code into another place but also slight refactor because this type doesn't exist now for example. Uh, so that's why I'm just commenting out these massive blocks of code here. Delete this file. All of the export code is just going to be um, in one file called export.cpp. This is where I'm going to put all of the logic for all exporting. Uh, what are you complaining about? What did I do wrong here? So I just have these temporary uh, uh, warnings that I'm emitting every time I try to export something. Um, so that's all the export procedure does at the moment. Now this, I need, this needs to be uh, so export to audio format. format. Okay, okay. <clears throat> um. Oh, another thing I need to do, I just remembered, is implement this browse button here on the dialog. I think that's the last thing I need to do for the dialog box. Uh, sample exporter. Get right type. So yeah, again, just delete or comment all of this stuff. Delete this file. So I think I have a bunch of just to do's. Delete this file now. Delete, 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 delete. And, oh yeah, this thing that I didn't do yet. Oh yeah, get rid of this. So 
So I basically made improvements to, if you look at the bottom left of the block header window, when we start up, uh, we get this little notification of the plugins being loaded there. Um, so I've just been making modifications to both the the inter-thread um, synchronization for that and UI changes as well. So I made it so people are complaining that it gets in the way of the cursor sometimes because this is what's used for the auto-saving uh, report as well. Um, it's not like doing the autosave, but it's just reporting uh, information that the autosave th thread sends back to the main. Um, and sometimes it pops up when you're trying to do something down there, I, I guess. Um, so I made it so that when the cursor goes near it, it fades away. And also it doesn't block mouse events. And also you, you can just click it to dismiss it as well. Um, right. So, if I drag a bunch of stuff in, and then click export, and then drag a bunch of stuff over here, and then export, then it's not doing anything. It's just printing out these warnings saying, not yet implemented. So, what I have now is a bunch of, <clears throat> a bunch of functions to implement. And the first one I'm going to, because I think it'll be the easiest, is sample audio. So exporting a sample as an audio file, uh, which is why I was looking at this stuff. So this is the old code for doing that, which looks very simple. So let's just take this and plonk it in here and ah, now, hold on. Hmm. That's not quite good enough, is it? Uh... <coughs> <coughs> right, I need to capture the sample data to stop it from going out of scope. So let me just, uh... yeah, before I do this, um... No, I forget that. I was thinking of like explaining some things about how block headers are architected, but I decided it would be too, it would take too long to explain and it's too late in the day to explain things. Uh, right. Um, so what I'm missing here is a block audio thing. I need some extra stuff in here. What I need is the sample data. No, in this sample audio. Here we go. Should be a shared pointer of sample data, I think. And I don't need to do that for any of the others, do I? No, I need to do it for this as well. Oops. Yes. So interestingly, I don't need to do that for any of these others. Like for example, if I'm exporting a block as an audio file, if it's a sampler block, for example, that has a reference to a sample, but um, the reference to the sample is not going to go out of scope during the export because of all of the uh, the 
the clever things I do with immutable data structures. But in the case of sample exports, I do need to just take a reference to the sample data to, to stop it from going out of scope during the export. So, um, not going out of scope, that's, uh, that's the wrong turn of phrase, but to stop the ref count from hitting zero. Anyway, uh, so I need to, what do I need to do? Make task. In make task, for these ones, I need to do a little something. Sample data equals, and I need to do this. Get sample data. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. This is good. This is good. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so there might not actually be any valid sample data. I might, just, might as well just do that in line. Because um, the sample can fail to load, but then it still gets like a valid sample ID. And it still has like an object in the list. But it could just be in an unloaded state. Um, so in that case, I'll just omit uh, an error message during the export, uh, which I think makes sense. Yes. <coughs> I could also just. Um, Remove it from the export dialog. Not not allow the user to to add it to the export list. Uh, I guess I can do both. Um, right. So what happens here? Okay. So. So I'm passing this model in, but I'm actually not going to use this because all the going to use is this. Right, if not data, then report error. All right, I need some kind of good error message. What does task have on it? All right. Update is now something like that. This is what's going to fucking take up <laughs> all the time is actually writing error messages and things. Uh, and I'm not going to be doing proper, I guess I should do tra proper translation strings as well. I'm going to assume that it's okay to use the translation server in a thread. Surely it's fine. Uh, I guess I can look it up. So 
create safe APIs. I mean, it says accessing servers from threads is supported. What does that mean? That's not very... <laughs> that's not a very good... That's not a very convincing sentence. Whatever. I, I see no reason why it wouldn't be thread safe. Okay, um... Uh, let's so return tr translate Export error sample data now. Format This is, yeah, this is the part that's going to take <laughs> all the time. Uh, TR export, what was it? Export error sample data now. Uh, because I'm going to write them all once and then realize I want to change them. So that's going to take even more time. Um, export failed for sample sample data is no or has no sample data has no data didn't I used to have That's what I need to check. Okay. Uh, yeah. And return. Uh, yeah. Okay. Do this. I'm missing a checkbox. Ah. The sample export has more. Sample export dialog has more. Um, more options than I remember. Oops. Exports. No, it doesn't. Ah, okay. Okay. If you change the sample rate, then another option comes asking if you want to resample. I completely forgot about that. Uh, so what that essentially means is if you change um, if you change the sample rate then if resample is enabled then the sample will sound the same but if resample is not enabled then it will the, the pitch of the sample will be different because it will be playing back at a different speed, but you can you can click resample so that it it sounds the same, but it just has has a different sample rate. Um, 
that's a problem because I, I'm not accounting for that option in my new export dialog. So uh, let me just have another look at the uh, the export dialog. So I need to think about how to. What can I do? <laughs> uh, what can I do? So this is how the export dialog looks. So if you're exporting a sample as an audio file and you set the sample rate, we're now not just exporting one sample, we're exporting multiple and they might have different sample rates. So we can't just do what we did before where We um, we list the sample rates and then put brackets original on the original sample rate because there's multiple samples now. So there's no original sample rate. They all have different... Okay, let's think about what to do. <clears throat> All right, so I'm just going to have a resample checkbox that is just always visible. And then maybe put another one of these tooltips next to it explaining what it does. Okay. Okie dokie, okie dokie. So... Let's just put the to-do so I don't forget. Add resample checkbox to dialog. Um, so audio options, resample. Okay, so let's assume that that's all set up and continue. Options resample. Okay, and then we have this the library writer this uh, I think was actually Possibly not working. I think um, I received a bug report a little while ago about that. I'll have to check. Um, yep, okay. <coughs> Oh no, I need to generate a file path. Ah, that's something that I need to sort out. 
I think. I need to generate file paths for everything beforehand to make sure that they don't conflict. Okay. Hmm. Um, output path. So how's this going to work now? Yep, yep, yep. So when I'm generating the tasks, I need to keep track of the um, the file names that have already been generated and then make sure that I'm not generating any that conflict. So I need to... Do something. Um, path list. No, file name list. Okay, okay. <coughs> at the end of all these. File name. Block ID. Output door. Make, uh, sorry, make. Output path. So output do options format file names. What else? That's it. Make outs put path. Whatever this is. Uh yep, um so get display name? No, that's not right. Should be get 
effective name I need to do special processing to make sure I'm not generating file names that are like not valid on certain operating systems like if you you can't create files with certain characters for example and that is something that I've already dealt with somewhere else in the code base and I can't remember where uh I cannot remember where. I know I, I did it with boost some somewhere. There's a thing in boost that helps with doing that. Here it is. I found it. Portable file name. FS. Oh, that's all oh, right. I did. I don't need boost. You can just do it. With I think this is what does it. If you if you call this generate u8 string, it will generate. Um, it will convert it to a file that is safe to use as a file name. If it contains like Unicode characters or whatever, it will. Uh, I think that's right. Mm, okay. I trust that that's correct. So, path output, what has this copilot done? Output dir plus file name plus dot plus get extension to convert it to ETF8 string. Generic U8 string. This is not a path, so I need to convert, convert, and convert between all these <laughs> different string types. Uh, okay. So 
u rate string is converting back to a string. I'm pretty sure this does it. That's what that portable file name thing is. It was here. Why did I call it portable file name though? It's a weird, weird name. Oh. We say make unique our paths. Pretty sure there's something in this library for getting extensions. Is it in here? Extension, get file extension to blood deal format. Uh, 
can I do this? I'm not sure. Uh, does it need to be sorted or? No, apparently not. <laughs> uh, so, Oh, Visual Studio was just lying. Okay. Uh, are you happy with that or not? Just throwing red squig red squiggly lines at me. Okay. I trust you. Um, so if count is zero then return that otherwise we are going to return file path plus exactly exactly yep plus one Alright, that's fine, I think. Uh, yeah. I need a function to convert this back to object format. to do this oh yeah <laughs> right I think I have a thing in here. Thank you, Visual Studio, very helpful. Block extension. I haven't decided about this actually. Whether I want to put a B on the end for block files. Do I want to do that? <laughs> no, I don't. Let's make the decision now to not do that.
you get rid of this. Okay. So now I can do this. <gasps> I don't have a format. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, I can just format object. Oh yeah. Is that to object format? Uh, okay. Okay. These lines of code are very, getting very long now. Yeah, that's fine. <clears throat> and I want the same thing for tracks. And workspaces. Should probably do something slightly more intelligent for the track naming, because uh, it should probably have the, like the workspace name prepended or something. But I'll get to that later. Okay. Um, All right, co-pilot, do your thing. Hello? Yes, that looks fine. Yes. Okay.
Right. Yeah. Yep. 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 Okay. So this I don't have to do anymore. So it should just be task output path. Okay. Get right type. What was that? Something that I deleted. Here. Uh. Right, that's just converting to... Oh, so I do need that function that I... I need the function to convert it to... Uh, to Bladio. Uh, to Bladio. suddenly got a really bad headache. Where's, where's that come from? Concentrating too hard. Too bloody formats. Mixing up the, the word type and format here, because format means something different to this library. That's okay. Task options. Okay. Right. Yep. 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 I need my interleaving stuff, wherever that is. I think in here. Nope. Where is it? Storage interleaving. And now we say report, send, report. Ah, no, I don't want to do this. I could do it like this. Hmm. But I don't want to. Uh, yeah, let's not do that. Should have bought. Uh, I didn't think about this. Okay, so do I want to support a porting and export in the middle of? A file, I guess maybe. Should abort. There's no reason why I can't do that. Return model critical stop token. Do 
Do I know how many chunks I'm going to re uh, write beforehand? Uh, do I know how many chunks? I don't think so. Well, this library does, just doesn't give me that information very readily. If I did, then I could um, make finer grained progress bars on the on the UI, but it doesn't really matter. So the way the, way the progress bar is going to work now is if you're exporting 10 things, then it will split the progress up into 10 segments. So it would go like 10%, 20%, 30%. That's how the bar will fill up. Whereas previously, um, I was reporting the percentage completed on the export in a different way. Uh, where I, I was literally just calculating the percentage and then sending it back to the main thread, but I don't do it like that anymore. So if you're just exporting one really big sample, then the progress bar will not actually re reflect the progress of that one sample. But sample exports are really fast anyway, so whatever. <sighs> that function's actually complete now. means I can delete this file. I've got a headache out of nowhere and I'm really tired. Maybe that's why. So I'll just test this and then go to bed. I just deleted this. This file is going to be deleted anyway. Let's Should be a int. thinking about how I can better report progress. No, I don't think I have to worry about that. I think this is fine. see what happens if I do this and then export these samples as WAVs. I mean, it's not going to work, is it? <laughs> Dump. Uh, I, I don't trust it that much. I, I want to... Hold on. Am I even using that directory.
I don't think I am. Export output. Grr. I'm not actually setting that at all. Uh, okay, I need to sort that out first. And maybe disable also the... Disable export button when output directory empty and also when export list is empty. Okay. Output folder editor. Exchanged. I guess I should also uh, what output folder editor. I don't even have this. Output folder editor. If I say temp and then close and reopen, should remember. Yes, okay. So let's get some samples into the project, export these four samples, blah 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 blah. See what happens. 
Okay. Oh. Is that what it sounds like? It is. All right, it's working. Um, let's set up the subtitles properly. So when a subtask starts, it should generate some kind of message for that thing in the bottom left. Uh, Let's actually put it here. So report send subtask. Make subtask description. these up here. Uh, so I need a bunch of stuff. For sample audio, um, I want to go I guess I want the name. So name is display name of this. No, I can't do that. I cannot do that because I'm in the wrong thread. And this is not a thread safe API. So I need to generate these task descriptions beforehand, actually.
So this is actually fine, but I just can't call it in this thread. I can't do it here. Right, uh, yep. Class description. I don't want this. Oh, I'm going to simplify this. This will be much better. Exporting sample. Sample ID. Exporting sample. Just add the other ones. Supporting block. Track. All right, this is easy to just do now.
Wow. Okay, make disk. Ah, that's not what I want to press. Trying to record a VM macro. It worked. Right. So now instead we go task. Task task. That should work, why doesn't it? From void to string. What are you on about? Oh, this doesn't return? Wait, what? Oh, I have to explicitly say this, do I? No, don't know. What's going on? <laughs> this should return. I'm doing something stupid. What am I doing? What am I doing that's so stupid? I don't see it. What am I doing that's... Hello? Oh, fucking co-pilot. Okay. Thank you for that, co-pilot. Right, that's fine. And now, what's... Oh, value. That's why it was complaining about that, so I can remove that now. So now I should get some proper task names. During the export, um, in a lovely thread safe way. Yeah, it worked. That's ridiculous. Uh, yep. Let's have a look again. Cool. What if I add a really big sample? I think I have some in here somewhere. I think these samples are quite big.
It's taken a long time to load these, actually, even even though, I mean, it is a debug build, but... I'm surprised how slow this is going. Those things are not updating properly either. Whatever, let's see what goes on here. Alright, cool. They're all there. Alright, this seems to be working so far. There's a bunch of little um, little issues to clear up, obviously, but we'll get there in the end. We're slowly making progress here. Yeah. 